Welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. Tonight we have a jam-packed slate of Ball State sports, starting with women's basketball, followed by women's tennis and softball, with some buy or sell to wrap up this month of February. This is Cardinal Sports Live, and it starts right now. This is Cardinal Sports Live. We're so back. We are so back. Let's go, I love it. Welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. I am your host, Nolan Beaumont, and I am honored to be joined by these two for the very first time that we've been able to work together here on the set. Ryan Siraki and Blake Flynn. Gentlemen, how are we feeling tonight? You know, Nolan, I'm feeling very good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for stepping in and filling in for Emma's spot. I know there's been a lot of moving parts this semester. I was on with Dom and uh, Trevor, and not Trevor yet. I want to get with Trevor. I was with Drew. So we're trying to, we're trying to get all this together. Um, I know you wanted to show with both of us seniors. We're the only seniors yeah. in the club. So this is a good opportunity, as you said. Blake, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. And like you said, like I'm probably going to be on the senior show, and you know I'll have to say my goodbye to you. So it's good that I also get to be joined by you, our second and final senior. Yeah. Uh, spring break's coming up. I don't really have any plans. Probably going to go home and work, but I'm excited. Happy Leap Day. Happy Leap Day. Also, happy birthday to Tyrese Halburn. His mm, sixth birthday. So like I said, I feel like it's only right that we work together at least once before we all head out and go, go about our lives after college. But we need to start with the women's basketball team and I would be remiss if we didn't look back to last Sunday with that tough loss to the University of Toledo on the road. I just wanted to get your guys' reactions and what this loss means to the MAC tournament as we look ahead to that in a couple weeks. Well that game was kind of the turning point of the season. I think you had that one highlighted on your calendar. You knew the importance going into that. We had beat Toledo when they came to Worthen earlier this season so going on the road there to Savage Arena was no easy task and they saw that. That was one of the most hostile environments Ball State has played in all season. Caleb, who was on the show Valentine's Day about two weeks ago, went to that game to cover it for the Daily News. 5,500 in attendance and the lights got bright. As he predicted it would, um, it was just a very slow start. 16 points in the first half. I mean, that is atrocious offensively. You know what I'm saying? So like, very you pull out the shooting performances. Alex Richards, 6 of 14. Ali Becky, 3 of 13. Milan Bischoff, 2 of 10. And I think the question that you know, we've kind of talked about before, but this was really highlighted in that Toledo game was what do you do when the shooting is not working for you? Can you look inside? And we were not able to do that. Obviously, 48 points total in that game against the caliber of the Toledo kind of team heading towards the MAC tournament that will not work out in your favor. So I think that kind of showed us what we need to work on. Obviously, we saw some improvements when it came to Akron last night. But the other thing is it, it kind of highlights the importance of these next road games. Obviously, Eastern this Saturday, we'll kind of talk about that, but it's not overly important as it is when compared to Buffalo or Kent State who are both three and four right now respectively in the MAC tournament those games have the utmost importance now because of that loss to Toledo. Yeah that first Toledo game at Worthen of course was on national TV our first game ever on national TV and this one honestly had the hype to also be on national TV but again it wasn't and you know it just kind of happens you know the result definitely wasn't that caliber of a national TV game but the biggest thing for me kind of like what you said you're pretty much locked into the two seed now because of tiebreakers, you know, obviously with the other tiebreakers that should be like head to head, obviously we split and then point differential, but it's some weird thing. I think you said it's like win percentage in the top 10 or it's eight. The top, everyone who makes a tournament, yeah. Yeah, top eight of the teams in tournaments. So this pretty much almost guarantees that you're not going to be able to get that one seed, but hey, second seed is the second best seed you want to be. So the biggest thing for me is you pretty much have to play perfectly and execute everything perfectly. Like you said, those road games against Kent State, who's 17 and eight overall, play them on March 6th. And we had that 57 to 46 win here on the 31st in Buffalo, another team, they're the four seed. So two important games against two of the top four seeds. Uh, Shelia Watson, again, playing un unconscious right now. Yeah, that's probably the MAC player of the year if you look at it. I mean, yeah, it has to be. It's got to be a lock. but. Uh, that was the 67-62 win on January the 10th. And that was a game where we actually, like, 
started out very slow as well, just like this Toledo game, but we eventually came back. So to me, the biggest thing is just making sure you're able to dial in and execute everything perfect to keep that two seed as we go to Cleveland. Another thing too, another uh, storyline is uh, Coach Sally has a chance to break another record, making it 27 wins on the season, which would be his highest total of all of his seasons combined as in his career. But now, even though we had that tough loss, they did have a very dominant win, completing the season sweep against the Akron Zips on Wednesday. Uh, what are your guys' reactions and what stood out to you guys during that matchup? Yeah, this was one week couldn't drop and we didn't, so we played really good. The biggest thing for me was the improvement in shooting from that Toledo game. 47% from the field, 33% from three, and 87% from free throws. So we improved the shooting, you know. Obviously, they were in the Shondell Practice Center kind of working on their jump shots and everything. And the next thing I want to look at is uh, capitalizing off mistakes. We know we've always talked about that Ball State Press. It's one of the best in the MAC. You know, Nyla Hampton, the steel god, best stealer in the MAC. Uh, we forced them for 23 turnovers, and off of that, we had 23 points off turnovers, so basically about a point per turnover average. So those were two of the biggest things for me. Yeah, honestly, I looked at the defensive side of the ball. Um, they obviously didn't set the standard for Ball State basketball on Saturday when it came to Toledo. So that was one thing that Brady really highlighted. And he gave a quote in the presser last night that I thought was really, it was a very, very hard quote, something you'd hear on like an album or something. Like, I don't know that in my time as a head coach, I've spent less time preparing for an opponent. Like, Bars. and that's no disrespect to Akron. Like, that's not what he was trying to say. He was just really trying to, in, you know, incorporate the mistakes that were made in Toledo and work on those going into this game. And defensively, they really stepped up. Reagan Bass coming into this for Akron, the only player in the MAC to average a double-double, and they did not let her touch the ball very much. She still got her 12 points. She still got six rebounds. But off offensively, that's who they looked to in their sets, and they weren't able to get it to her. Also, forcing a lot of turnovers for point guard Kaya Wood. She's probably the quickest player I've seen in the MAC for traveling uh, violations, a lot of shot clock violations. And that's been a key thing for the Cardinals in Worthen this season. Forcing these teams into uh, you know unforced turnovers, something like a shot clock violation, there was a bunch of those. So defensively, they really stepped up. You talked about offensively. I think at one point, Ali Becky was going federal from the three-point line, five of ten. She just had an amazing game that she needed. Alex Richard ca continued her dominance. There's a lot to take away from that game, all positives. Yeah, that 19-point outing from Becky, uh, that was her second time scoring 10-plus in the last seven games. That was her highest scoring game since January 27th at Eastern Michigan where she scored 21. So like you said, that's a very good resurgence for our star of the team as we look to go to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They definitely look like a completely different team, and that's something that we hope that carries over into Saturday on Senior Day as they host the 6-20 and 20 Eastern Michigan Eagles. We hope that we can send off Estelle and Annie as best as we can. What are your guys' react? Or what do you guys think Coach Sally's game plan is going to look like on Saturday? Yeah, well, even though it's a stinker of an opponent, you still got to give respect to a MAC, you know, conference rival. I don't want to say MAC conference, excuse me, because that is something that has been on my nerves recently. And I was actually going to talk about that later, but MAC conference, don't say that. Um, <laughs> Sally's approach will be very similar to you know any other opponent in this conference because moving forward, we need to we can't think like oh this is just a team that obviously they're two and what are they, 2 and 13 in the conference? That doesn't matter. Who cares, right? This is something where they're a one man show with Tara Eek, 6'3 center, protects the paint very well, 51 blocks in the season. She leads the MAC in blocks. So I think this is a prime opportunity for someone like Estelle Puchkros, as you mentioned, um, Maddie Bischoff, who hasn't been shooting as efficiently as she started the season, to start getting their perimeter rhythm back. And I think that'll be a huge thing as we move towards Cleveland. And hopefully, you know, if we run the score up a little bit, as I expect them to do, we can get some Sydney Schaefer minutes as well, who's also graduating. She spent two seasons here uh, as, after she transferred from Western Michigan. So I, I expect, uh, you know, a celebration. We're going to get a lot of Annie Rouch minutes, a lot of Pooch Gross minutes. I think it's going to be a good ending of their Ball State career inside Worthen. Yeah, like you said, their best player is obviously Tyra Eek. Uh, she's 6'3", by the way, which is very impressive. Uh, she's also from Spain, which is also where Estelle is. Her homeland of Madrid is six hours away from Manresa, which is where Estelle calls home. Um, they're a very overlooked team. Obviously, the record doesn't show, but they've had their bright moments. The biggest thing for me, keeping the pressure. They have committed the most turnovers in the MAC with 468 total. And again, like we said, you know, obviously, Nyla Hampton, our full court press, half court press, has been a key in why we can win some games. So we're going to look for that again. You you can never expect to win. Ma it's, when it's Maction, you can always expect something, some fireworks, anything like that. So we definitely have to stay prepared once we go into Saturday. When we come back, we'll head to the tennis courts to look at what's been happening with the women's tennis team. Stay with us.
Victor Lee flew for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. Basically, he had to relearn everything. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey. My name is Gary Parker. I served as a Cavalry Scout and a military policeman in the United States Army for 20 years. When I was a Cavalry Scout, we had a young lieutenant that came in, great guy, but he moved on, got promoted to lieutenant colonel, went on to Afghanistan, and I was able to keep in contact. And I'd wake up one morning, go on social media, and there's that post you don't want to see. For whatever reason, he, he took his own life. Nobody knows why he did it. And if there's something that we could have done to prevent it from happening, safe gun storage can prevent gun suicide because it's that added step to get to your firearm that might just give somebody a moment of reflection on what they're doing. As a veteran, we need to be ambassadors to people that don't have the knowledge that we have. Anytime you're not storing a weapon safely, you're putting yourself and your community at risk. Service never stops. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. But what? I'm high. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to CSL. Spring break cannot come sooner for the women's tennis team as the struggles continue with a 3-4 loss to Eastern Kentucky on Sunday. We've been talking about their struggles a lot on this show, guys. So where do they even go from here with all these losses building up? Yeah, and even though they're building up, I think Sunday was probably the epitome of disaster for this team. They had a 3-0 lead. They needed one more singles victory, and they couldn't find it, losing 4-3 to the Colonels. Um, I think a lot of internal reflection has to be done at this point. Obviously, the most important thing is getting Annika Planasek, your number one singles player, healthy. She suffered a concussion injury on the second play of doubles at Youngstown State uh, a few weeks ago. So getting her back is obviously key because that is someone who has the experience, and she's obviously our most talented player in the eyes of many. Um, and, but I think when you talk about internal reflection, you have to harp on the positives a little bit too because I think one thing that's come of uh, Annika's injury is the dominance and the rising of Jacqueline Purcell who hasn't even been seeing singles you know, playing time. She moved up to six, she got a victory against EKU. She was one of two singles victories and her doubles experience has been incredible too. She's really good up close towards the net and I think that is good enough to maybe get her in the conversation where even when Annika comes, come, Annika comes back, she can stay in the singles rotation. And the other thing is Tan Watko, the, the, the freshman, I was very impressed with her play on Sunday. She didn't win, but I think what I saw is enough to potentially be our best player down the line. Um, anything that's overhead is lunch for her. She just kills the ball anytime it's over her head. So I think you kind of look on what you've been doing positively. We obviously know this season isn't looking great, two and six on the year, as you mentioned, Nolan. You can't, you can't focus on that, though. You have a long season ahead of you still. You have a long, we haven't even hit conference play yet, so keep, keep focusing on the positives, really. You're not going to say the same, though. I can um, just tell. Yeah, those were – Actually, all great points, and yeah, I'm going to pivot to the complete opposite. So, Nolan, what would I do, and what should we look forward to? Um, honestly, just pray for the season to be <laughs> over, or at least to get to Mac play, at least. Survive Mac play, obviously, you're two and six. We throw around the word uh, aura a lot. All that left once uh, the big three left last season with uh, Paul Shuck, Peeler, and Amy Kaplan. Yeah, obviously, yeah. it was all gone. Like we've said before, this is a very young team, so obviously we could have kind of predicted this. Obviously, we didn't want it to happen. But I think the biggest thing you mentioned, and I think it was before the show, that next year is not even going to be easier. So <laughs> with these athletes that you are able to keep, whether they transfer or graduate, whatever happens, I think the biggest thing is just obviously getting through this season and then just preparing for next season so that we don't see this. Yeah. You made a good point. It's still a young team with a brand-new coach, but Ryan – I like what you're thinking. Staying positive. Let's leave all that negativity in the bat in, in behind, and let's mm -hmm. look ahead to this weekend. Yeah. The team is going to hit the road to face Dayton on Friday, and then to Butler on Sunday as they look for their first win on the road this season. 
What do they need to do to make that happen, guys? Well, Dayton is certainly not an easy matchup for us. They took Toledo 3-4 to four was their final score. They beat Eastern Kentucky, who we just lost to, on February 16th. And Dayton's number one singles, Natalie Oshecki, is someone I've seen play in person. She took Mosh Polishuk last fall toe-to-toe. Uh, -to -toe, and that means bit trouble for Elena Malik, who struggled on Sunday. She had a, a, a set lead and didn't pull out the singles victory on Sunday. So I think what needs to happen is obviously Malik needs to bounce back if she's still going to be our one singles. I think there's hope that Annika plays this weekend, but I'm not convinced. So I'm going to assume that Malik is still going to be our ones, our one singles. Um, and then for Butler, I think that's our best chance for a victory, honestly. Uh, they're 8-6 and six on the year, but their singles spot from 4-6 to six are very vulnerable. And this is where I think, again, Isabel Tonwako or the freshman, um, Persall or Hazelbaker, whoever's going to play 5-6, that's where you you clean up the win. You get the, the important wins on the back side of the singles. And I think we have a chance at doubles, too. All you need is four points. I think Butler's our best chance. I don't see us winning both of these. I think the best case scenario is split, but why not go ahead and try and split? Yeah, I agree. And for me, this is a very too minute thing to that still have a lot of importance. Minutia. Minutia. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Shout out Underhill. Uh, stop failing to not win the close sets, like we said. In that 3-4 loss against Eastern Kentucky, Hazel Baker and Malik lost in three sh sets in their singles. So if you win one of those, even both, that completely flips, flips the game on its side, and that could easily be a win. And before all that, you have to just get one and find the motivation because currently, according to their schedule, we haven't won a single point on the road. Not a single point. We went 0-7 at Purdue, 0-7 at Notre Dame, 0-4 at IU, and 0-4 versus Colorado. Even though we were technically the home team, we were still playing at IU. So we haven't even sniffed a point on the road. That will certainly end this weekend. I, I, almost, I will guarantee it that, that that does not continue this weekend. If it does, then I don't know what to say. I might have to revoke my know my seat here so we'll see. Ryan you mentioned uh, in the previous question that we're still pretty far away from conference play but who are some teams in the MAC that you guys are looking at to uh, stand out and possibly go make a push for a MAC championship? Yeah they might not have the best record right now but I promise you Toledo will be a problem when it comes to late April. They are hosting because of their dominance last season that when they were into that tournament as the one seed. I promise you Toledo is hungry and they want to get into the NCAA tournament after Ball State robbed them of that experience last year. Uh, Cassie Alcala is back. Sloan Teske, who I have personal issues with, uh, she's back. And obviously the Talamaraha sisters, they're not twins. I thought they were twins for a while, but they're actually just sisters separated by two years. That is a talented Toledo roster, and anyone in the MAC should be scared to play them. Yeah, the biggest team I'm going to look at is uh, Buffalo. They're 12-2 and two for the whole season because I couldn't find their just spring stats for some reason on their website. They're 73-24 and 24 in singles, 35-12 and 12 in doubles. They have a double tandem of Ombre Amat and Esme Andrensen, who are 11 and 4. And with the next team, I'm going to talk about Western Michigan, who lost also 9 and 2. Uh, Valeria Monco, reigning Max Singles Player of the Week, 9 and 1 on the season. Uh, she also is a very good doubles player with uh, Lindsey Ziegler, who they are 8 0 on the season. So for those two tandems, it's kind of like the immovable force versus unstoppable object. That's going to be a really great matchup to see in the doubles if they end up going to the tournament. But those two teams in Toledo as well, I think, are going to make the push. And before we go to commercial, if you want to throw a fourth team, because that's what the MAC tournament is, four teams, I'll throw Miami, Ohio in there. That team is hungry as well. They have really nice facilities, really talented. That's going to be a team to look out for as well. I think I'm going to write off Ryan's positivity and say Ball State Cardinals, because it's still pretty early. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to oh, check in positive. on the softball team and their upcoming seven-game week after the break. You could be me for just one hour If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds Walk a mile in my shoes Walk, Walk a, mile a mile in my, in my shoes. shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes
We are back on CSL to hit the ball diamonds with the softball team. Last weekend, the team competed in the I-75 tournament going 3-2 and two with two losses to Georgia Tech. What were some highlights and lowlights from this uh, I-75 tournament, guys? I think the biggest highlight for me was obviously the absolute domination of Michaela Timmons. She had a 529 batting average, 12 RBIs, 8 runs scored, and 5, count them, 5 home runs on the entire weekend. In that Georgia State game, she had a two-run homer on the first pitch she saw of the game. And in the bottom of the ninth, uh, two or top of the ninth, sorry, 2-2 two, two count, two outs, potentially looking for Georgia State to get that one more strike or ground ball, get back to their side and hit. She had a game-winning game, game-winning game grand slam, sorry. So she was absolutely dominant. And it kind of is really good to see because she was pretty good last year, had a little struggles at points, but now she just looks like our dominant hitter, best player, it's no question. Yeah, and this is why you know that uh, Blake and I are good together because his points were very similar to mine. We took away a lot of the same highlights, and I think one thing you gotta talk about is McKenna Mulholland's appearance on Sports Center Top 10, uh, coming in at number eight for her uh, diving catch, I guess. And you know what was really stand out to me about that was the last time I saw a Ball State player on the Sports Center top ten was Jalen Sellers in January of 2023. He had a monstrous dunk against Western Michigan. So it's not very often that a Cardinal gets on that platform. So when they do, you got to give them their flowers. Um, but the thing for me was really just going over 500 in a you know a conference setting like or a tournament setting like this. Excuse me. You know these early season tournaments are not always opponents that you, you don't really know what to expect because they're coming from all walks of the country essentially, and even though this one was I-75 technically, but I think it's very important that we came away with at least more wins than we did losses. Georgia Tech, a tougher ACC opponent, but again, we'll get into that with yeah. the lowlights. Yeah, for the lowlights, I think for me, was definitely the pitching. Um, over the whole week, and we allowed 21 runs over the five games, so that's about four runs per, per game. Pitching staff total had an ERA of 4.33. Uh, we allowed five walks per game, in out of this like combined weekend and three strikeouts per game. So walking more than striking out other batters isn't gonna help. Francis Kane and Bertie Murphy really had the heavy load on this weekend having the most appearances. They're probably gonna be our two aces. It's gonna need a bounce back from here. Yeah, my low light was just, we came out, we had leads in both of those Georgia Tech games. So I'm just gonna say blowing leads and our comebacks falling short because in the first game, we thought we had a chance. We were starting to make a mountain a little bit of a comeback. The second game, not as much. But I think that just shows that, you know, we can build off what we, you know, put out there on the field. We're learning about each other as teammates, as softball players, and I think we just use that as the season gets closer to match play. Yep. Well, the team is going to hit the road and head to Richmond, Richmond, Kentucky this Friday to play the EKU Colonel Classic, hosted by Eastern Kentucky. With the competition that will be at this uh, Classic, what do you guys think is going to happen? Well, uh, I think this one's quite simple. I think Canisius and Purdue Fort Wayne are both opponents that we should handle business with. Uh, Canisius two and five, so not much under their belt this season. Uh, Purdue Fort Wayne four and ten on the year. Now, no really standout competition on that schedule either. So I think the one thing we have to keep an eye out for those opponents comes from Canisius. Christy McGee Ross, who's on an absolute heater right now, six of seven in her last seven at bats. Um, just worrying about her when she comes to the plate. But other than that. I think we'll be fine with those opponents. Eastern Kentucky is where I find a problem, and I don't know if you have anything to add about Eastern Kentucky that really stands out to you. Yeah, absolutely. They're 10 and four. You know, obviously they're really good. They, I think you said they started actually nine and zero before yep. this recent stretch in Utah. Uh, Kennedy Drafton is their best hitter, 469 batting average, almost batting a thousand and a 571 OBP. She's walked more than she has struck out in the season. And then Maddie Rutan, 1.71 ERA, five five and two three complete games. And two of those are shutouts. She's been really dominant. So I think we could go about three and two or four and one in this. I'm going to say three and two is my prediction. I think I'm just excited for the competition that we're going to get to see from Eastern Kentucky, see how our offense handles that type of power from them, and see if we can hang with the big girls, big women, excuse me, uh, when we get to play Eastern Kentucky. When we come back, we will hit some buy or sell before we take off for spring break. Every day, thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. So if you want to talk to your kids, you have to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk.
Welcome back to our recurring segment on this crew, Buy or Sell, where I will be asking Ryan and Blake whether they will buy or sell these takes. Now, guys, there has been some discussion in the media about moving the NFL Combine out of Indianapolis, even though it's been here since 1987. Are we going to buy or sell the Combine staying here in Indy? Uh, simply put, I'm going to buy that it should stay. I'm selling that it actually will. Once the NFL realized that their draft could be, you know, kind of a rotation between cities, all they saw were dollar signs. Now they have the opportunity to do the same with the Combine. Even though it doesn't have the same aura, it will probably start doing that. So I'm going to sell that it's staying in Indy. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I mean, it's nice when your city has nice names. We have the All-Star Game. We've had some Super Bowls. There's no real need to move the Combines somewhere else except for what you said, the dollar signs, which, again, they'll probably do. But, we, I mean, it shouldn't really matter. I'm buying this. Fingers crossed that it stays here in the Circle City. Duke basketball was in the news this weekend for their loss to Wake Forest, but for some other reasons as well. Are we going to buy or sell banning court storms in college basketball. That's the easiest sell for me. Um, I know Filipowski played last night and there's a whole discussion on that. Caleb, I'm sorry, I'm not getting into that. Don't want to hurt your feelings. Court storming has been around for decades. It's been a staple in the sport. It's one of the most exciting things for a college fan. I know we'll never get to experience that at Ball State. Um, I think Jay Billis should be fired into the sun for his comments about uh, detaining individuals who rush the court. Honestly, just prepare better for it. Wake Forest failed at that, obviously, but we have seen schools prepare for it, and that's how you have an effective court storm. Yeah, I'm going to sell this for the same reasons. I mean, it's it's fun, especially if you're on that side, you know, getting to storm the court. You really don't really ever have access to be on that court. Uh, also, with the thing, Filipowski also, but Caitlin Clark, I think there's just better measures that need to be taken, but I don't think we should absolutely ban it altogether. So I'm selling. Before I move on, just here's, here's the best way to stop court storming. You ready? Don't lose to an inferior opponent. That's such a great idea. I wish Duke would have Cook. thought about that when they lost to Wake Forest on Saturday. Are we buying stock in the returning Mid-American Conference member UMass, or are we going to sell that immediately? Uh, I think it's cool that they're coming to the conference. I won't lie. I'm going to sell it that it really does anything for us right now because we just introduced the pod system in football, and now you're adding a 13th member. Unless you plan on adding three more to even the pods out again, why even do that? It doesn't make sense to me. And again, this is something I even struggled with earlier. I said MAC conference. A lot has happened this week on Twitter with people saying, oh, they're joining the MAC conference. It's redundant. Just say MAC. But I am selling it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm also selling it. Uh, from 2012 to 2015, their football team was actually in the MAC. They went 8 and 40. Now, that was the first years uh, they've had with a football program since 1906. Mm. But they haven't changed after, after that fact. They've been 16, 16 and 72. They will add value if other teams join, but for now, just adding UMass as a sole addition just doesn't make I sense. I can't wait for that Central Michigan versus UMass matchup. That's going to feed. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait for that one either. Now, there have been a lot of Ball State fans that are not happy with running back Marquez Cooper with his decision to enter the transfer portal. Are we buying into the fans' justification for being upset, or are we going to sell it? And typically, I side with the players, but I'm going to buy this because I feel like Marquez was kind of weird for this, honestly. Like, what are you doing, bud? Um, on November 27th show, we talked about the tweet that he had regarding Mike New. If the FSU fans care about me, they'll keep this guy here. Well, they obviously they, they listened to you. They kept him here, and then you take off. Now, I understand now that I, I won't disclose where I'm hearing this from, but, like, he might not have been the best academically or a good person overall. Maybe he just cares about himself. So if, that, if that's the case, get out of here. We don't care. We don't want you. Go get your 1,000 yards and don't get drafted. Uh, I'm selling this. I mean, let's be honest. Like, look at the program. Um, we are not good. And we're probably not going to be good for at least next year, maybe over the facts. So, obviously, he wants to go win. That's the reason he came here from Kent State because they were terrible. Came here. was even more, more terrible. So, I mean, what are we doing? Like, just let the guy live. Last thing before we go, are we going to buy or sell? And I, I expect it to be a sweep across the board, by the way. Are, gonna, are we going to buy or sell spring break being too early for us? Easiest buy of the night, Nolan. It was a buy. It's March 1st. Spring break starts. It's way too early. What are we doing here? Yeah, I'm buying, and I'm buying it multiple I'm buying times. it with you guys. But New Orleans is waiting for me, I just so you know. But that is all the oh. time we have here for Cardinal Sports Live. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check, it, check us out on Instagram and X at BSU underscore CSL. And head to our YouTube page to watch CSL Plus, where they cover more Ball State sports. For Ryan Siraki, Blake Flynn, and our producer Trevor Martin, director Isaiah Rosner, and everyone else behind the scenes, I have been your host, Nolan Beaumont, and we will see you after spring break on Cardinal Sports Live.